This is not Italy. To compete in some traditional country show. And I'm hoping to win one of those rosettes. On the way, they'll meet some of Britain's best local food producers. Why would you ever eat a cupcake when you have parking? <laughs> Before competing head to head with each other. <laughs> And the great British public. I thought the competition was big enough. Our chefs are at the mercy of the harshest food critics in the land, the beady-eyed country show judges. We don't like odd ones. This competition, and I'm taking it very seriously. Hold on to your aprons, it's country show cook-off. Top chefs Rachel Allen and Theo Randall jump into their trusty van and start the last leg of their country show road trip from the west of Scotland to Shropshire in England. Today they travel from Kington in Herefordshire to Ludlow in Shropshire. Oh, this is so sweet, isn't it? What a beautiful town. So far our chefs' fortunes have been checkered when they've taken on local cooks at country fairs. Each time our professional couple cook up a storm and manage to beat seasoned local bakers to the top spots, we give points. So far they've entered four dishes and it's level pegging with five each. So today's cook-off is their last chance to win the week. It's been good fun, hasn't it? It's been great fun. It's been a great road trip. Really, really good. And fun has done. It's done really very, well. Don't speak, well. Don't speak too <laughs> soon. <laughs> it's a exactly. way to go. <laughs> Today our couple arrive in Ludlow. This medieval market town has become a gastronomic destination with many award-winning restaurants. At the heart of the town is Ludlow Castle. This bastion was started in 1086 and nowadays is the location of the Ludlow Food Festival. This new kid on the block only started in 1995 but already attracts 160 food stands and 20,000 visitors. This festival is foodie heaven with lots of demonstrations, cooking classes and stalls where you can see, buy and try all types of lovely grub. It's here that our chefs face their final challenge and it's the toughest yet. Bravely, they've entered the fidget pie category. This pie is regional to Shropshire and dates back at least 400 years. Traditionally, it's a portable pie taken into the fields at harvest time. So not only do Rachel and Theo have to beat the best local cooks, but they have to beat them at their own game. But it's going to have a lot of interest, the um, fidget pie, because everything else has been judged already. It's the last food being judged. So, oh, really? Yeah. So we've got to do a good job. Their mission is to outdo local cooks like Carl Heber Smith. Came third last year into the uh, fidget competition and first the previous year to that. Today our professional pair really do have their work cut out. As they have to win over a panel of three judges. <laughs> Leslie Mackley is a director of the food festival. We have to take it very seriously because it's very important to the people who enter their produce. Bruce McMichael is a food magazine publisher. Just because of the pies there doesn't mean it's going to work for the, for the judges or it's going to look great or taste great. And if that wasn't enough, Judge Xanthi Clay has penned cookbooks and writes food columns for national newspapers. Oh, I think um, I know my boil out from my soggy bottom. Oh, I say, this trio really know their onions. The ante really has been upped in this last chance to beat local bakers and win the cook-off week. Rachel Allen's the doyenne of baking, but even she's lost out to local cooks twice this week. Her chocolate cake didn't place and her fruit flan was a flop. Should we go home now? So her baking credentials are on the line. Rachel will have to step up to the plate, but we're sure she can make the grade. Theo Randall has made his mark in the restaurant world with Italian cooking, which is no mean feat considering he's British. But even Michelin starred Theo's found the food fight with local cooks hard. I think our plan backfired big time. He's only placed twice and he'll need to go all out to beat Rachel. Today our chefs park the van on the banks of the River Team. This fast-flowing river is popular with anglers, but fishing isn't on our chef's minds. They'll have to hatch a plan to outstrip local cooks at a local dish. I've been doing a little bit of research on, on the fidget pie. Some people think that it could come from the five-sided dish in which it was apparently 
traditionally cooked. Some people think it could come from the word fitch, which means a polecat, being because it apparently smells a bit like a polecat. It's, it's like, like a polecat. Cat. The, the apple. Yeah, which isn't very nice. So are you happy with your recipe? Do you think it's authentic? I think the judges don't want us to veer away from, you know, the traditional recipe too much. Well, it's it. a Shropshire classic. A Shropshire classic. <laughs> It's a Shropshire <laughs> classic. <laughs> yes, it is. And you'll both need to get this pie right, because whoever places highest will win the week. So we're absolutely even. Yeah, yeah, okay. two golds and two silvers. Okay, so it's tomorrow's great. the one. It should be really, really great to get something tomorrow. Um, oh. I think it's going to be very busy tomorrow. Oh, very wow. Very busy. And it's all fun. locals. So Apart from us. Apart from us, yeah. <laughs> really imposters. With our fidget pie. Yeah. We'll probably be kicked out of town. Our fancy fidget pie. <laughs> <laughs> if you get a first prize, you get paraded around the town. Oh, really? Well, I don't know. I'll just make it up. <laughs> <laughs> Theo, you're okay. such a tease. But around here, people are very proud of the food the area has to offer. And with it being harvest time, there's lots of delicious fruit around. Rachel and Theo head the few miles to the Algonic fruit farm on the Worcestershire border. The Alga family have run this business since 1989 and produce organic fruit, free from any artificial agents, and they're very proud of their produce. This family is so environmentally conscious, their farm is powered by wind and sun. Rachel and Theo meet Billy Alga and his son Billy. And there are three Billies. There are three yes. Billies. There's my father's Billy as well. So it's Billy, Billy, Billy. So it starts to get confusing. <laughs> This is beautiful here. This is our top orchard. This is Victoria plums, and we've just started on these. So everything's hand-picked? Everything is hand-picked. These we pick fresh for market, or for people to come in and buy. We actually grow about 30 different varieties of plum here. 30? How many varieties of fruit do you have? We actually grow rhubarb, black currants, red currants, tayberries, blueberries, apples, Pears. The last things that we'll actually harvest will be chestnuts and the almonds, and I'll show and you the almonds. You see, I've never heard of almonds being grown in the UK. Oh, yeah, it's no problem, and we were told they wouldn't really crop there, but they're doing wonderful. If you ever come here in spring, these oh, trees blossom. were just one mass of blossom for about oh. a fortnight and the smell was exquisite. Because almond the flowers are susceptible to frost, we're on the slope here and they're at about 600 foot height. And so you've got a constant breeze, you can feel it. And yeah. that keeps the air frost off when the blossom's out. Oh. In a few years time, we'll be getting roughly about three to five kilo of uh, almonds a tree, perhaps more. When will these be ready for harvest? These will be ready for harvest about the first or second week of October. And Gorgeous. Fresh, fresh almonds are just They're so, so good. Mm. Yeah. Totally different to the yeah. dried ones. Oh, they make your mouth water. Wow, these fruits and nuts look absolutely delicious. So they're off to the farm to meet Billy's mum, who's going to show them a favourite dish of hers, a plum pie. It's just a very simple plum tart, and this one, we think, started life in Switzerland. So it's self-raising flour and four ounces of butter. Just rub it in quickly. And what plums are these? These are fella. fella They're okay. a, more a cooking plum than an eating plum, but the colour when they are cooked is beautiful. Is that because the skin's quite thick on them? Is I it? think so, yeah. yes, I think so. And quarter of a pint of milk. It looks like you've made this quite a few times yeah. before. <laughs> it's, it's, scones. Scones. It's, it's just scones, just gently pushing it into position. So do you have freezers full of all your gorgeous fruit to keep you going through the winter? Uh, Billy sells the best fruit and I have a freezer full of his rejects. <laughs> <laughs> Most people reject fruit because it's not supermarket pristine or the same size. Yeah. If it's got a blemish on it, so what? Well. That's the scone base done, and it's time for the plums. So you just put them straight on, nothing, nothing on them. So you've cut yeah. them in half and you, you, take them out of the stones. Just, just chop them. Shall I start at the yeah, other side? What a great idea, yes. God, he's eat a plum, Rachel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've had so I've many. Had that many today. <laughs> so a little bit of butter in each. A little, yeah. 
So what's this? Cinnamon and kind of... Mmm, lovely. Cinnamon oh, and sugar. Oh, yeah, that would go so well with plums. Mmm. Mm. Okay, oh, and then the wow. other... It's so old. simple, I love this. Claire cooks the tart for 20 minutes at 180 degrees till the plums are bubbling and juicy. Mmm, that looks gorgeous and smells divine. It smells so good. Mm. Would you like to... No, you do the honours. You, you made it. You do the honours. All the juice has gone into the the dough. Mmm. Mmm. That's delicious. The the, the um, mm. plums are just tart enough. They're kind of mm. sweet but tart. Oh, that's delicious, Claire. Thank you so much. Really good. Well done. That's a very happy customer. <laughs> Looks scrummy, but unfortunately, you can't stand around eating plum pie all day. You need to get started on your fidgets. These pies are a Shropshire speciality, cooked in homes and restaurants all over the county. Traditionally made with pork, apples, potatoes, onion and cider. <laughs> First up, it's Theo. This is my pastry for the fidget pie. It's a very sort of short crust pastry. He puts flour, butter and two egg yolks into a food processor. Okay, so we're just going to add our ice cold water. I feel like a disco in here every time I turn this on, the lights go out. <laughs> Ta da! Right, okay, we'll put this back in the uh, bowl. Without working too much, just make sure it all sort of goes together. See, that's our pastry. While the pastry chills, he gets busy with the all important pie filling. It's going to be really competitive, this, so this has got to be really good. He fries an onion nicely. and starts to line his pie dish. Okay. So I've got some potatoes here, which I prepared earlier, and they've been blanched. And then I'm just going to put a bit of oil in the bottom here, just so it makes it non-stick, so the potatoes don't stick. And I'm going to start layering potatoes. It can be quite rough, you don't have to be all fancy and do little perfect layers, just sort of pop them in you sort of form a whole floor of potatoes. And I'm just going to put some on the side, just so we form a kind of crust. Now he adds his secret ingredient, pancetta, Italian smoked pork belly. Cut the rind off. One slice will be fine. I'm going to overpower it, and then just some little slices of the pancetta. So pop that in with the onions. And that should give it a really lovely smoky flavor. It's time for another typical fidget pie ingredient, cooking apples. I think about brown apples is they're you know, nice and sort of tart. You don't want to have anything sweet because they just won't withstand the cooking. They'll just sort of fall to pieces. Kind of centimeter slice, it'll be perfect. Next up, it's the main ingredient, pork. And for his take, he's using gammon. Hot for gammon in there. Remember, this has been salt and cured, so I wouldn't salt it. And then we've also got our sage. And I think sage really benefits from being cooked for a minute or two. We're going to throw a few slices into this pork. Oh god, that's good. So we just start putting some gammon in, nicely packed in. Then we add a few of our apples, brownie apples. They just change colour a bit, but don't worry about that, because we're going to add some cider. And then we've got our onion and pancetta. That goes in. Try and get it in through the holes. So just layering it up, a bit more gammon. There's all this lovely juice there. I want to use that. That's good. More of the apples. That's that. So just like push it down a bit, just so it's all really firm in there. Let's finish off with a little bit of black pepper on top. And then some of this muscovada sugar, which will kind of soak into all the apples and everything. Mmm. Layers done. It's time for the sauce. He's mixing corn flour and double cream with cider. And then we're just going to pour this over. That's starting to get really soaked up and those potatoes are going to really absorb it. I just want to make sure that there's enough liquid just halfway so it really cooks together because this is going to cook for an hour and those potatoes are going to act like sponges. They're just going to absorb all the goodness. No fidget pies complete without pastry. And then over the top. It's not the top so our little friend can breathe. And just trim those edges. Give me a little bit of overlap because you want to have a little bit of extra pastry just so you can do that crimping. And then I'm just going to do a very simple nip around the edges. Nice and rustic. You know, me and my rustic pastry. Lastly, he glazes his rustic pie crust with beaten egg. And when that cooks, it should go really golden brown. 
and all that filling inside will cook nicely. The steam will come out.